Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. I'm Ken Burtis coming to you from Haleiwa on the North Shore. And today we're starting a new series called The Big Questions. <laughs> now, for the past six months, we've been doing, uh, we've been looking at joy, finding joy. Uh, but I'm going to, uh, we're going to talk about how to ask big questions of ourselves and how we can find happiness through asking those questions. And we'll do that in just a moment. Now, again, uh, you know, for the past number of months, we've been focusing on really joyous things. And that's really a way to deal with the negativity that we're facing in our life. But it's not the only way to deal with that. And so today, this new series about asking big questions is going to give us some direction. And that's what I've really been concerned about because because of the negativity, because every time we turn on the television, uh, we're watching negative news. Every time that we are listening to our iPhone, we're hearing negative news. Uh, every time we're wandering about the internet, we're running into all this negativity in the world. And it's just very hard to find one's direction. It's certainly hard uh, because there doesn't seem to be any solutions. Uh, so this whole th series that we're going to be going through is going to be asking some questions that will help us find that direction. Uh, and to help us get started with all this, I have three very smart and talented ladies who you've seen before. And they're with me today. And I want to say welcome to uh, Deb Ramon and Jamie McCuit and Penny Smith. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> Well, let's talk about how big questions can help us. Uh, you know, a lot of people just seem to get lost and um, it's hard to find oneself. Uh, many of us are walking around with all this negativity with the war, uh, the mass shootings, the coronavirus, of course. Uh, we're walking around in a fog and things don't seem the same today that they did in the past. We seem to be not the same person we were. And uh, like I said, we're sort of walking around in a fog in the present, and we don't really know where we're going in the future. So to do that, we're going to ask these series of questions. And I've asked these ladies to join us again. And I'm sure you remember them from, uh, if you tuned in on March, uh, they were talking to us about uh, freeing their imagination through writing, which was a great show and really a happy time uh, that I had with these ladies. Uh, and they're going to help us by asking probably one of the biggest questions I think that we all need to ask ourselves, and that is what impo is important. What is important to us? Uh, and to do that, I'm going to ask each of them to uh, tell us a little bit about what they feel, and then we're going to open it up to a discussion. And the first person who's going to start off is Jamie. So, Jamie, you've got the floor. Thank you. So um, I wanted to sort of set the stage that we are coming out of this pandemic and we have been totally reliant on technology during the time of it. And I think I also have a different perspective because when you have children, what that does is not only disrupt your whole lifestyle, but it's also created this generation that is so used to dealing with technology that their interpersonal skills have totally diminished. So um, what used to be important to me uh, was activity. I'm very active. I have a lot of things going on at once. We would be, you know, during the week, there'd be all kinds of sports activities or uh, drama activities or enrichment activities in addition to school. And uh, I've sort of kept that pace throughout the pandemic. But now what I'm finding is that I can't sustain it because it's sort of pre pandemic technology has increased so much that uh, I, I don't want to give it a bad name because I definitely uh, had advantages with the technology. So being in touch with old friends, uh, being in closer contact with family that's all over the world, those kinds of things enriched. But the technology itself then became this addiction like the kids are suffering from as well. So, you know, I cannot go to sleep at night now without my words for friends and my French Duolingo and, you know, the series of texts and emails and messengers and WhatsApps that have to be answered. So what used to be important to me 
was keeping these relationships alive, but it was in person. <laughs> so now it's the, the relationships are sustained through this artificial means. And I have tried very extensively to like, use it to my advantage but i have found that i have fallen in that hole like everybody else where it's just like everything is powered by that i don't know what i'm doing next unless i look at the digital calendar oh and did i actually remember to put that thing in the calendar so uh, my life has become just you know the the same circus pace it always had sort of amplified three or four times so what is important to me now is the quality of the time that I have left to spend on this earth, the quality of that time now. So being in the now and being present and being fully present, not trying to be, not being pulled by the distractions of all the other activities. So I've gone from somebody who was career focused, uh, sort of educated focused for my son, um, activity focus for uh, social justice and causes. And I'm trying now to learn how to say no, which is something my good friend Ken is always telling me to do. Like just <laughs> reduce it. But in the context of the big picture, my happiness now is more dependent on those quieter moments. And I know during the pandemic, a lot of people my age probably experienced a good length of time where they had time for self-reflection. They had time to like really delve into whatever they were into, but I didn't. And so now I'm sort of, okay, what is it that I can do in my life to make me feel centered and fulfilled? So I don't wanna give up the level of activity, but um, the quality of the activity and the interaction with people. And you're always going on about the negativity in life. And one of those, one of my strategies has been to cut the negative out. And that means negative influences that maybe you weren't even aware of before. So that passive aggressive friend who is like, yes, supportive, but very critical as well, or, my crisis is bigger than your crisis right now. Or, um, yes, you've been the support person for so long, but um, I, I can't really like take on your stuff because it's too big. So I guess the biggest lesson that I've learned through this pandemic is that I am no longer that person that could do everything. Like I really had the perception like, I can do this, I can have a career, I can have a kid, I can have a family, I can have a very full social life, to going like, oh no, I can't do it. And the reason I can't do it is because it's only, I've only become aware in my 60th year, oh, things slipped through the cracks. Oh, I missed that. I, I don't even know what that person's talking about right now and I'm in this meeting. And so, um, sort of becoming my younger self again, where it's a, it's sort of an open playing field. I'm not necessarily in that one direction, but whatever direction I am in at the time because, becomes sort of this tunnel that I am there and present and not worrying about the next, what the next thing is. So I say the biggest thing is about pace. All right. Yep. Well, thank you. I think we're over to Tamara. Okay. Well, I also was um, thinking of this question, what's important in terms of how COVID has changed um, my relationship to my life. And I think when COVID really, you know, first shut down everything, a lot of people were doing one of two things. They were either looking for a lot of distractions, to kind of pass all this extra time that we had on our hands, um, or they were kind of stepping back and really thinking about kind of reassessing what their lives looked like and what they valued. Um, I, I know I had friends who realized they no longer had these social obligations that they weren't too excited about to begin with. So all of a sudden you didn't have to go to all those parties that you were sort of, you know, half-hearted about. And that's re that was really telling, like, okay, I don't really need to value those those kinds of appointments anymore. Um, and I think a lot of people have carried that 
on now that we're open and kind of, you know, entering our normal, our normal lives again. Um, for me, what it really brought to the fore was how important my, my creative activities are and how important my relationships are. And both of those got very deepened during um, the last couple of years. And um, it helps to have that kind of digital connection that I could uh, ignite with people who were far away. But I also, I had a couple of friends here who ended up, you know, being my pod mates <laughs> during um, the shutdowns. And the friendships I have now with those people are, they're much deeper. They just go way down to bedrock. And it's just because we spent so much time together during 2020 and 2021. And, um, it made a big difference in the quality of our relationship. Um, and for me, I'm a painter and a writer, and it was just crucial to spend time doing those things for my mental health and and just to be active, <clears throat> you know, in an intellectual and engaged way. Um, for me, in my life, too, I, um, I was in my very early 20s when my father died, and I think that made a big difference in in my following life in terms of realizing that life is finite, doesn't go on forever. And if you don't do something during this life, that's it. That's your, that's your opportunity that you just missed. So COVID kind of intensified that. And um, I've realized, you know, if there are things that I really want to do with my life, I need to do them right now. <laughs> I need to make them happen while I have the opportunity, while I have my health, while I have, you know, all the capabilities that I do have. Um, and that that really helps snap things into perspective. Um, so those are those were what I found to be important. Um, and having a sort of drastic situation helped me kind of put a frame about what the frame around the things that I really wanted to be spending my time doing. It also um, highlighted the things I don't want to spend my time doing. And I tried to jettison those, you know, like at the end of my life, I don't need to say that I spent a lot of time watching TV. That's not very fulfilling for me. <laughs> so I don't, you know, and um, so it just, it every day I try to think about what's valuable to me. And I try to prioritize what's valuable to me. And it'll be different for every person. But for me, I know it's it's making and creating things and having good connections with the people who are important to me. Terrific. Thank you, Tamara. Really appreciate that. Penny, you're up. Holy Moses. <laughs> well, I think probably I, in some respects, the pandemic was very good for me. Um, and I really can't say it's because I was multitasking too much or any of that, because a lot of the things that I do any way I did during the pandemic, I'm a writer, I wrote three books during the pandemic, and I love that. That's my favorite thing in the world to do. So that was not a hard thing. I was with my partner, which I love to be. I, it was great fun. And, you know, that was good. But the other thing about it was, is that, I don't know, I think there's something about me that from the very beginning, I think it was my probably my mother that said, if you want to do something, do it. And we recently heard a woman in one of our professional groups who said, um, the way to turn on creativity is to say yes. Mm -hmm. From the time I've been a kid, I said yes. It's like, oh, there's an opportunity here. Should you do it or not? Well, I don't, yes, because <laughs> it's learning. And, and you and it's fun, it's different. And if you don't like it, you can always walk away. It's always about choices. So for me, relationships have been really, really important. I'm basically, um, I guess you could say, bless you, an only child. My husband and I are the last of our line. We have no family. So the friend relationships are have been absolutely critical. I have a pod. I call it the girl gang in San Diego. I have a girl gang in Palo Alto. I, and I go to see them. And, you know, during the pandemic, of course, we couldn't. So we Zoomed twice a week, all of us, you know, in each group. And somehow or other, that was fine. It was enough. 
But the other thing about it was, is this thing about saying, yes, I can do that. A lot of us here decided, well, this pandemic, so what? So three of us hired our favorite swim instructor. One of, his, one of the women had a swimming pool. And every, every week we would meet at the swimming pool. She would teach us. We'd be at different ends outside, coming in with, you know, no, not going through anybody's house. Absolutely no concern about that. Um, our art teacher went on Zoom. My Pilates teacher was on Zoom. <laughs> the art teacher, if you can imagine, putting uh, clay outside of her door so that we could each individually come pick up our own. And then we are all working together on Sunday in front of the camera. It was different, but we managed to keep going. Um, but I guess the other thing about it is, is that the biggest thing for me is I just turned 80. And so hearing 60 is sweet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, you know, but... You, you, so you really do take a look and say, well, what's next? And for me, it's just kind of another step in the adventure. I mean, when we when I left home to go to college, it was, how's this going to look? When I left college and went into to work, you know, it was, how's this going to look? What do I want? What do I want? And what choices do I have to make? And I'm there now. We're looking at it and saying, well, what do you do when you're over 80? You don't want to deal with the management of a house, you, you know. All the things you're reading about in the press all the time right now is exactly where we are. But I look at it and I say, okay, I set up a strategic plan for it. I've met with all kinds of people. We've gone out to all these different places to look. We know what we want for a place to live for the next step. But I also know that I'm going to keep writing. <laughs> I'm going to keep painting. Uh, my friends, as long as we're all living, are going to keep in touch with each other. <laughs> so, you know. I don't know. I'm just a, 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 you know, a perennial optimist, number one. And number two is somewhere down the line, I've always believed, oh, I can do that. And then as I got older, it was, well, what is it that I want to do? Not just something, but what are the choices? And once you get into something, you don't like it. It's very easy to say, mea culpa, it's not right. The best thing for all of us is for me to move along. And I've done that several times here in the last couple of years with organizations and whatnot. So, um, I, you know, I'm looking at the next adventure. <laughs> I listen to the news. I don't listen to all of the news anymore because it's pretty much the same. Um, I pay attention. We're ready for the hurricane season in case it should come. But, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's... Um, it's just life and it's 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 an adventure and it's it's you're a problem solver that's the way i look at it i have to solve some problems and make some choices and then get on with it and i know that it sounds very pollyanna-ish but you know, so i hope that answers some of the questions well thank you penny yeah uh the one thing that i would throw back at all three of you is that you know what i hear from all three of you is change you know as we get older as we pass through the various stages of life we change and some of the things that were important in the past are no longer that important uh, but some of the things that were important in the past are still important some of the things we did we no longer do but some of the things we did we're still doing so it's change and it's not change it's it's change in keeping some things and letting go of some things so I guess I would ask all three of you, if we're talking about, you know, we've been talking about what's important in the past and what's important today. Uh, if you could take a little more look into the future and say, okay, if I want to add something, you know, what would be an important thing that I would like to try or accomplish or experience? Uh, in addition, maybe to the stuff that I'm still doing, that's still important, like Tamara says, uh, but maybe there's something that's ahead of us that uh, we have yet to delve into or to really give it the test of, is this important for us? It might be, or it might not. Like Penny is saying, you know, we, we have a choices there. So can, you, can the three of you look a little bit into the future about what's important that may be coming up for you? Well, I really like Penny's attitude about um, saying yes to opportunities that come along. And um, I'm a great one for variety and change too. So I really like um, 
the accidents that happen with life. Uh, and I, I try to live as lightly as I can and be open to whatever comes along. So if I was to have to, you know, if an opportunity came to move somewhere, experience a different culture, be halfway around the globe, I'd be up for it. It's, uh, it's hard to tell what's going to come along, but, um, you just have to, like, I, I just don't want to be too tied down to my routines and, and think that all my obligations have to hold me here forever. Well, I can speak a little bit to that because for a variety of reasons, we have moved something like six times in 10 years. Um, you can't rent in Hawaii without having the house underneath you sold every two years. So, <laughs> but even from that, once or twice, we've gone to the mainland and made decisions to do something else. And, and you know, that gets easy. And I think that has to do with how much, how many years you have on you, <laughs> how, how long you've had to deal with that, because that will come up. That was, I guess, a surprise for me is that throughout my earlier life, was that sometimes stuff just happened and you were kind of forced into making choices that you might not normally have chosen to make. And and it's, it's sort of a situation of saying, okay, um, I got to do this, we're going to go do this, or I'm going to go do this, but how good can I make it? You know, of all the things that are in this scenario that I don't particularly anticipate or want, what are the best parts of it and what can I make work? And, uh, you know, that's, that's the phase you go through. You know? <laughs> and age says, age is the wrong word. Experience has something to do with that. You know? So I would say for me, um, one, I never expected to be a mother as late in life as I became <laughs> one. And so there is something that I can't say, no, that doesn't work for me anymore, which is parenthood, right? Like I've got to, I got to slug out for however many years he's on the planet and I'm on the planet. And um, I think what has changed as far as my future visions of my life goes is that I want to instill in not just my son, but the next generation coming up, because I do a lot of work with kids anyways, um, the sense of value that we have on those very things that we have talked about, the, the friendships, the connections, your creativity, doing something that's fulfilling in your life, not being driven by numbers or prestige or whatever. And I mean, it sounds very idealistic, and I know it's not possible in our lifetime, but leaving the place in a in some kind of better shape than I found it. So here we are, not in the, only suffering from the throes of a pandemic that happened, but a major war going on, forest fires. Forest fires is wiping out my country of Canada right now. I mean, it's astounding. So climate change, all of those big, big issues, and to still be able to, you know, like, do your social justice things, contribute, be a, a valid contributing member of society and not a me generation kind of um, atmosphere, but to really show what the value of life is to that next generation and that they do have the power to change things that we may have made a mess of. Um, and that like you, I'm an eternal optimist, but this is the first time in my life that I have to say I have even questioned that approach of like, wait a minute, I, I do wake up every day and say, whatever that disaster was yesterday, it can't get worse. And it does. <laughs> it does. Like, I have been surprised how many times I've said that in the last, not even pre-pandemic, <laughs> even pre-pandemic, um, how I just can't believe this is what's happening now. So I sort of feel like we're living in this very surreal time. It's almost like, I don't know, a superhero movie or something where it's just like one ping disaster after another. And how are you going to put that fire out? But in all of those movies, there's always that feel good factor, right? Of like, oh, they made friendships, they bonded in, they'll love each other forever. Um, so my future movie I hope to encompass some of that. 
you know, I, I would say something to that too, and that is that sometimes this goes back to the absolute, and Ken, this is your area, <laughs> you would probably know, but it goes back, way back to, to yours, who you are as a person from the almost the beginning or from very early in. And, you know, I, I asked, somebody asked me that question in a consulting thing one time, you know, what's important to you? To you personally, I, well, I need to, I want to be considered or known. And that's the wrong thing. I want to be thought of as a, as a good person, as a good person. Second of all, a person of fine integrity, whatever I do, that's something I want. And then I want something, I, I mean, I need to be creative. That's important to me. And and I think those internal things sometimes, and for me, as I've gotten older, where I realize, you know, it's the thing of the value of the small or the virtue of the small. I don't have to be a big thing in anything or make huge changes here or there. As long as I get up every morning and do the best that I can, that's kind of my mantra. And, uh, um, and it's very interdirected, even though I am kind of known as an extrovert. So... I, I think that has a lot to do with it and the ability to define that as we get a little bit older and start throwing things off. You know, it's, I don't need to be known as this. I don't have to be that. I don't, da that, da that, da that. As long as I feel deep in the core, I'm a good person, a person of integrity, and I still get to be creative. <laughs> well, we're sort of running short of time, ladies. Uh, as always, there's uh, too little time and too much to think about. Uh, one of the things I would simply add to what you all been talking about, and I'll tell the audience this, these three ladies, one of the things that they characterize to me is that they're all open. They're open to something new. Uh, they're open to opportunities. They're open to change. And I think that's a big part of what we're talking about here is that's important to always be open to what the future may bring. Now, the future may bring stuff that takes us in a direction that initially we don't want to go in, but whatever direction it takes it to, takes us to, and whatever door opens up, there's always something really interesting in behind that door. And uh, with these three ladies, and I hope myself, uh, we can find that interesting thing and we can do something that's important to us and to other people. Uh, last, uh, we got about, uh, 30 seconds for each of you. Last. Uh, I have a motto. <laughs> I have a motto <laughs> that I stole 30 from 30 seconds, Germany. Jamie, 30 seconds. Okay. So this is accord, the world according to Maria Scafidi. Okay. If it ain't fun, don't do it. And if you got to do it, make it fun. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Tamara? I heard this the other day, which I really like. If can, can. If cannot, try. <laughs> All right. And Penny? <laughs> Actually, I, I have to go along with both of those. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a new one, but uh, it's just the thing of get up every morning and do the very best you can to, and, and just be happy. Try to be happy. <laughs> you know, the thing is that, you know, when I wake up and I tell my friends this, uh, <clears throat> I have an open window by my bed. And every time I wake up and I see that dawn coming and I look out and I look at my orchid tree and my garden and, uh, I look at Hawaii and I say, wow, you know, it doesn't get much better than this. So we've got a big advantage over a lot of people. And uh, I'm forever grateful for that. And I'm ever, forever grateful to my friends, especially you three ladies. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Ken. Uh, we hope. <laughs> and I want to thank, of course, uh, the audience that's tuned in today. I hope you'll continue to tune in. We'll be talking some more about the joy of things that make uh, that brush away that negativity that we find ourselves in. And we'll also be asking some uh, other big questions uh, that gives us some direction on where we want to go rather than just sort of floating along uh, like a lot of us have been tempted to do in today's uh, negativity. Uh, and in case any of you are wondering uh, if I'm ever going to have any uh, males opinion about this, I'm also going to have three males, a couple months down the line that are going to tackle the same question. Now, I don't think that there's a whole lot of difference between the uh, feminine and the masculine point of view on these type of things, but we'll see. Uh, it'll give us a chance to take a look. Uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you, ladies, again. And uh, thanks to 
Think Tech Hawaii, all the people there that have helped with us, with uh, Michael and Ash and Jay and Haley and everybody else. And again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again. Adios. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.